good day, my students at home. I am Daniel Bulus Chawe, your woodwork teacher. I am presenting a lesson in woodwork with the topic preparation of timber to required sizes. My outline for today is definition, importance of timber preparation to required size, <clears throat> stages to be followed, and the tools to be used in each stage. Timber, as we all know, is obtained from trees. These trees are found in forest or an open area, which can be our farmland or behind our homes. To obtain timber from these trees, the trees are first cut down with the crown being taken off, leaving behind the log. These logs are furthermore splitted or converted into timber boards seasoned or dried and being transported to the timber sheets in the market where the carpenters or woodworkers can assess them and take them back to their workshops for further usage. We all know these timber boards have moisture content in them and this con uh, moisture content needs to be reduced in such a way to a certain percentage so that the wood itself can be workable. But before we go further, let us try to define the concept. The concept or the term timber pre uh, preparation refers to the stages or steps to be followed to ensure the workpiece or pieces are prepared to expected sizes for further use. Why do we need to prepare this timber board to sizes. We have reasons or importance why this job or the, uh, this uh, timber board needs to be reduced. First, for accuracy. We all know for every article to be produced, let's take for instance the size tools in our homes. We all know the size tools in our homes comprises of legs, styles, rails, and tops. The legs of these size tools, size tools are being shaped or prepared to a specific size. So also the styles and the rails, which are the connectors, as a, and as well the top. These legs, if they are not prepared to same sizes all during the assembly, the cutting of joints, and any other operation, difficulty may arise. So for uniformity, these legs and all other members must be prepared to their required size. Secondly, it saves time. Let me try to streamline my discussion to the school system. In schools where woodwork is being offered as a subject, most especially during examination period. Exam bodies normally send in practical items or uh, practical requirements in which the school makes some pieces ready for the student to use. Prior to that time, if these pieces are not prepared to sizes before the day of the examination, it will augur well for the students. And the student may not find it easy meeting the time during which the practical, uh, the practical uh, 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 session may last. And as such, to do away with all these difficulties to be, uh, to be faced by the students, it is advisable that a time should be given prior to the day of the examination so that the student himself can use these stages, which we'll discuss later, to find himself through and to prepare his pieces to the required sizes and shapes, pending when the exams will start. And the third 
is to ease the finishing processes or process. At the end of every practical work, finishing has to be done. And if the joints are not made in conformity to themselves, at the end of the day, the finishing may, uh, the student trying to finish his project may find it difficult finishing it. Finishing a project requires some papering, nailing, gluing, assembling, and maybe some uh, polishing. All these have to do with finishing. And if the joints and any other part of the, uh, of the work is not being prepared to a specific size, for sure, finishing the job will not be easy. It is not worthy. It is worthy to note that the stages for preparing a piece of food to required size is governed by an acronym, FUTER. From the diagram we have on the board, F from the acronym FUTEL stands for face, E stands for edge, W stands for width, the letter T stands for thickness, the letter E stands for end, and L stands for length. Let's take a very close look at the diagram we have on the board. This diagram is representing the workpiece. This workpiece is yet to be prepared. This workpiece has a rough sewn edges that needs to be prepared to the size which my student will need to use for its practical uh, work. Although what we have on the board is just a piece, it's just a sample. So we are using this the picture we have on the board to be a sample representing all other uh, uh, work piece which will be used. On the diagram, we have the face. The face on the diagram are two, one on top and the other below. And we also have the edge, one by the right and the other behind. We have the end which we have one end here and the other at the rear end. And we also have the thickness, the length, and the width. All these are representing the acronym FUTEL. That takes us to the process. The question is, what are the steps are we to follow to prepare our piece to a required size being given by the exam body? Step one. Select the face side, plane it perfectly flat. Test with a winding stick and straight edge. Mark with a face mark pointing to the edge which is selected. After this operation, how do I know that my face is perfectly flat? To perform this operation, the workpiece is first mounted on the bench vise or kept on the workbench being supported by the bench stop. The bench stop is always there to serve to help the woodworker only in situations where the workpiece is more than two feet. While in a situation where the workpiece is less than two feet, the bench stop, uh, the, the, work, uh, the, bench, the bench vise can be there to hold and also support. Immediately after the first operation has been done, the student is expected to take off the workpiece from the vise, 
using the winding stick or the straight edge in situations where these two are not readily available. The tri-square can be used. Furthermore, the workpiece is expected, the, uh, the student is expected to lift the workpiece to the eye level with the tri-square either placed horizontally on the piece or diagonally. Each of these processes will help to know whether the workpiece is planed flat and straight. That is, after the uh, tri-square have been swiped along the face of the workpiece. From the diagram we, we have on the board, the straight edge is being placed along the length of the workpiece. The diagrams may be too much, that is why I am representing it with one. The straight edge here can be placed diagonally, just like I have said. Step two. Plane the first edge. Plane the first edge. Remember in the first step, we are told that our face mark is to be placed in the direction of the next face, that is the edge, in which the student is to pick. Plane the first edge, test for straightness with a straight edge, and for squareness with a tri-square. The tri-square, the straight edge, is on the edge of the workpiece. And the tri-square is always placed in conformity with the face, the face edge. And the tri-square, the stock of the tri-square, is placed on the face, while the blade on the tri-square is placed on the edge being planed and being swiped to determine, to know whether the edge is straight, flat, and also squared to the face. The tools we use at this stage include the plane, the straight edge, and the tri-square. That takes us to step three. Step three says, Gauge to the required width on both sides using the marking gauge from the face edge. Plane down the gauge line and test for straightness and squareness. The first two steps have summarily told us the face of our piece is flat and straight. And the edge, as well, is flat, straight, and squared. The next step is saying, it comes to us, it is not telling us to mark our width. Using the marking gauge, from the diagram on the board, we have measured our width. Using the marking gauge, the stock of the marking gauge is always placed on the edge, while the blade of the marking gauge, which carries the pin, is used, is being placed on top of the face on which the pin is used to scribe the surface as what we have, and also at the edge. And at the other face, at the other face beneath, the scribing is done. And after this, the workpiece is being returned back by our supporting tool, which is the bench vise, on which the, the gauge line is to be the workpiece, that is the waist, where it has been hatched, is being planed down to the gauge line. Once that is done, we use the straight, we use the marking gauge and the measuring tool or the tape to take this measurement. The tool we use in these processes include the marking gauge, the plane, our rule, and also the tri-square. 
That takes us to step four. In step four, it says, gauge to the required thickness from face, from face side down both edges. Plane down to gauge line and test for flatness, straightness, and squareness to both edges using the marking gauge, straight edge and tri-square. We can see from the drawing on the board. The T is the thickness. Where it has been hatched is the thickness, the waist of the thickness. The level here has been the gauge line where it has been taken. And from the gauge line to the face, we can see that the marking has been done. What is now left for us is to return back the, base, uh, the piece to either the bench top or the work piece where the planing has to be done. This planing has to be done to the gauge line. And the tools we use in this step include the marking gauge, the vise, which serves as a supporting tool, the tri-square, the straight edge, or the tri-square. Just like in other parts or in, in other steps, the tri-square, straight edge, or the winding stick are still used to test straightness, flatness. That takes us to step five. Square, mark, cut, and shoot. That is plain one end and test for squareness to face side and face edge. A measurement has been given. Let's say, for instance, what we have on the board is given as 200 millimeters. 200 millimeters. And the correct measurement, which the correct length of the item or the pieces which the student is supposed to be used is 170 millimeters. We all know. Before we get that, we cannot just maybe from the onset measure our 170 and make the cutting straight ahead. No. To ensure that our workpiece is squared to all, to both the face side, the edge, and also both the ends. First, one end is to be selected. That is what step five is saying. Square, mark, cut, and shoot. One end. This is what from the diagram. An end has been squared. The pieces will now be mounted on the uh, bench vise where the cutting of the waist is done. And using the plane, we shoot the workpiece. We shoot the end. And using the tri square, we test for squareness to the face, squareness to the edge. Finally, that takes us to step six. Once step five, once step five is ready, an end is already plain and squared to both the face and the edge. The next, that is step six, the required length is being measured from the prepared end. Measure the required length from the prepared end and square. Cut and shoot off the waist. Let us note that the tools used in conjunction with the bench vise, which holds and supports the job while in operation. Using either the steel rule or our rule, the required length is being measured and marked, while the tri square is used to square round our pieces where the waste part that is not being required will now be cut off and shot. After which, using the tri-square, we test for squareness to the face, squareness
squareness to the edge and flatness to both the face side and the edge. Once this is perfectly done, your workpiece is okay. That takes us to the tools used. On the diagram we have on the board, we have been, we have been naming, we have been mentioning, I have been mentioning uh, marking gauge, marking gauge. The first drawing we have is the marking gauge, which consists of the stem, the thumb, screw, and also the pin, where the measurement in conjunction with the stock is being taken. And the second tool by my right here is the trial square. And the third by my left hand side is an illustration of how the marking gauge is being used to mark out a piece. Mark out a measurement on the piece. And finally, the fourth is how the tri square is being used for squaring and also testing. To round up everything, Summarily, I want to believe so far so good I have spoken to length and we have we have we have we have learned a lot, we have learned the stages where or how a piece can be prepared using the six steps. And finally before I go, let me give you some assignments. Question one, describe the correct sequence of timber preparation. Question number two, list any four hand tools used during timber preparation. And the last, question three, state the precautions to be observed when using hand tools in timber preparation to size. In summary, in summary, describe the sequence of timber preparation, question two, List any four hand tools used during timber preparation and set the precautions.